So we're going to go over a couple different ways to create different textures, different effects with your paint for moments when maybe your brush is not working for you, some little shortcuts. So um, the first ones we're going to touch on are blotting, different ways to blot out paint to create textures. Um, pretty much anything you put into a wash, right, so a very wet wash, is going to create a texture similar to that of whatever's on it. It's going to move the paint around. So first thing I'm going to try here is just a paper towel. I made a very wet wash carefully pressing the paper towel into it and then pulling up and you get this sort of like grid from the paper towel so you can start to see that like you could press anything sort of absorbent into it and get some some interesting results so now we're going to do plastic wrap um, I like this for effect for anything that's like distressed or I want a more modeled like um, organic shaping on it so I did a couple blots of another color just to help us see how the plastic wrap reacts and you're gonna place plastic wrap on and unlike the paper towel, it's not gonna dry very well because plastic wrap, so you have to just leave it there. And then last one we're gonna do is just with crinkled paper. So another wet wash. Now paper is not as absorbent as a paper towel, so it's gonna go a little slower. You can see that it starts to refill kind of because the wash is there. So you do a couple times, but it's gonna get like a much more subtle effect than the plastic wrap. So we will wait to un unveil the plastic wrap till it's dry. And we're going to work on impressions. So if you run a sharp object, I'm using the back of a burnishing stick into your paper and create dents, grooves, divots, scratches. Um, these things will take the paint different than the unmarred surface of the paper. So over here, I'm just putting some, some not, it's not super pointy, but using burnishing stick, able to press in some ridges into it. And you can see when I apply my wash over it, it absorbs into those ridges and they are darker than. Now you can do sometimes more specific things by putting a piece of paper down, or I often use a piece of scotch tape and then you can push on it with like a ballpoint pen or something else that doesn't mar the paper as much. It creates more of like a smooth effect, but it also doesn't make as good of an impression. So sometimes it doesn't last. So you'll see like it shows up when we first do the wash, but then the water sort of soaks in the paper and the paper rebounds. So we'll go back and layer some more impression texture on top of both of these examples. So you can kind of see how you could build it to fake like a wood grain or hair or fur. So next we're going to look at doing salt and alcohol. So these are both chemical things that work well with um, watercolor for different effects. Salt is very popular. It's a classic. You'll see it in a lot of things once you start to recognize the look. So laying down a wet wash, um, you want to be pretty wet, not like wetter than suede wet, but not incredibly standing water. This one we're just going to do table salt, so very thin, little salt. And the middle one we're going to do more like, um, I have some very coarse sea salt that's unground, big chunks, and you'll see they get kind of a different effect in each one. Now with salt, uh, they work best if you let them air dry for as long as possible. If you do it with a blow dryer, which I did to get this demo done, um, they don't work as nicely. So with the bigger chunks of salt, you can really place them. People do even with um, little tweezers to place them exactly where they want. And these often create kind of like a little starburst effect with a dark center and white around them because the salt is very dry and it absorbs in the um, paint, the water out of the paint. So over here, we're gonna use rubbing alcohol. Um, it's in low supply, I know, during quarantine, but even if you have one of those little like prep pads from a first aid kit, it'll work. Um, so I'm just gonna dip a paintbrush into the rubbing alcohol. And you can see that because alcohol and water are kind of opposites, it repels it and creates areas of dry paper. Um, what's nice is that this is now like dry where the alcohol is, the alcohol will dry out and I can go back over this. So doing this instead of um, frisket, which leaves such a hard edge, it has a much more painterly effect. 
or doing this instead of the white colored paper or white colored pencil because I can't go back over that area. So even I can start dropping in little paints into the middle of these because they're entirely, you know, paintable in the center. And it dries pretty fast. It will repel the paint until the paint is dry. And then once everything is dry, you can go back over it as much as you need to. These can be used um, to create some nice effects. Sometimes it's not as stark if you do it in a less wet wash. If there's less water, right, it doesn't move as much because the chemical reaction isn't as strong. So you can use them to create clouds and skies. You can use it to um, preserve areas if your wash got away from you a little bit. It's just a really nice tool to have on hand. So we're gonna look at spatter. For spatter, I like to use stiffer brushes than my watercolor brushes, so one area we're going to do wash and do spatter onto like a suede damp paper on top of this wash and then next to it we'll do a dry spatter. So you just get um, a stiffer brush. I like ones with like kind of when you fling it, you know, toothbrushes work great and you run your finger opposite it. When you're loading it with paint, make sure the paint that you use does not have a lot of water in it. But you'll see that where it hits the wet wash, it is a much softer effect versus where it's like a dry page or a dry wash underneath it, you're gonna have a much more fine flick. So with dry brushing, same trick. It's as little water as possible to get the paint moving. On a dry brush, you even like, you can rinse it, but then just wipe it off with your rag to get as dry as possible. And then if you have a paintbrush that has a choppy edge, or I'm using a fan brush here, you can create some really nice, very fine details and textures without having to go over it a lot. These work well for weathered buildings, wood grain. That middle one works really well for wood grain. It works nice for, you know, landscapes, adding moss to things, stuff that has to have a more organic feel. These just sort of help you get there faster. So we're gonna let these dry. We're returning. See how when I pull up the plastic wrap, I've got some pretty good texture in that top one. And we're going to now scratch into this first impression circle with a very sharp exacto blade. So this actually will create kind of a burr on the paper. It'll rough it up in a way that what we did before did not. This is more cutting into it instead of just pushing into it, right? And then using a lighter yellow to kind of layer multiple colors. And you can see it just created a lot of texture that's kind of soft and a little more random than maybe if we tried to do it with just a paintbrush. It would take a long time to do each individual hair. When I'm doing these washes, I'm doing them a little drier. I don't want them super wet so that they don't soak into the paper as much and ruin the embossing because the paper kind of rebounds when it gets wet, soaks it up and then it plumps up. So you can even pick up with um, a rag if it's starting to soak up so that you'll keep your embossed shape. Down here, you can look at like, if you then start doing washes over these textures you've created, if you use these as a foundation, this starts to be a lot more like a wood grain now that's filled in with a little bit of yellow, a little bit of different tones. And you can then add dry, spatter on top of the areas that were these softer, more subtle spatter areas. So you can just really layer a lot of these to create some different effects and to give you a nice foundation to be painting on top of. I blow dried these, so we're gonna pull out these little salt crystals so you can kind of see the result of that. You can also Google salt effects in watercolor and see kind of what different results and different washes look like. They are unpredictable. Sometimes they work better than others. So you have to kind of surrender to the watercolor powers that be and let it happen. Hope that helps.